Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing you guys a new Jamf4 application I have created, Test Calorimeter. So the goal of this project was to model a calorimeter in Jamf4 by creating a detector that will accurately record the energy of the particles that hit it. And to do this, I use the sensitive detector class in GM4. So I'll also be going over how a sensitive detector works and how you can implement one in your own GM4 application. So if you want access to this project, you can just go to my GitHub and on this release, you can download the source code and check it out for yourself. So once you've compiled the source code, if you go here to the release directory, you'll see the test calorimeter executable. So double click on this. All right, so here is test calorimeter. I'm going to put the GUI on the left and the output on the right. So here I'm going to write the command gun energy. Let's do 4 MeV. All right, now let's try to run one particle and see if we get 4 MeV displayed on this detector. So I'm going to type run beam on one. All right, guys, so if you see over here on the right side, we have outputted on the console energy for MEV. So to show another example, let's set the gun energy to, let's say, 1 KEV. So do gun energy 1 KEV. Then we'll run one more particle. And there you see on the output, we have 1 KEV. So the detector is telling us exactly how much energy that particle had. So now that we've seen the demonstration of the application, let's look at the code really quick and see how this all works. Starting here with the main program file, testcalorimeter.cc, we have a very basic main GM4 application. So here at the beginning, we have some logic that decides if we're going to run a terminal GM4 application or a GUI GM4 application. Then we have to set our three required initialization classes. And if you want more information about these classes, you can look at one of my other videos I posted. But basically, every Jamf4 application, you need three things. Physics list, detector construction, and action initialization. All right, so now let's look at some of these classes that we defined. All right, guys, so here in action initialization, the only thing we're doing in this class is we're setting our primary generator action. So the primary generator action is basically the particle gun. And... Without this, we wouldn't be able to shoot any particles. So let's go ahead and look at our primary generator action class next. All right, guys. So here in the primary generator action, we are using the G4V user primary generator action, which is the virtual class that we need to inherit from if we're going to use this primary generator action. So the only methods that we really need to override here are generate primaries. And in this event, we need to create those particles. So here in the source file, we just have our constructor here where we create our particle gun. Then we're going to set the type of particle that the gun's going to shoot. For testing purposes, I just set it to gamma photons, but we can do any particles. They theoretically should all work. Then we're going to set the direction of the particle to be 0x, 0y, and 1 in the z direction. We just wanted the particle to shoot directly at that detector. Then we set the particle's energy to 5 MeV. And we can always change this at runtime like you saw, but this is a good baseline. And then we finally set the position of that particle gun. So what's really nice about defining a particle gun in this way is here in the generate primaries method, all we have to do is call the generate primary vertex of the particle gun. So now that we've defined our particle gun, we need to define some physics for those particles to follow. So here in our G4V modular physics list class, we're going to define the physics. And for the modular physics list, the only ones you need to override are construct particle and construct process. So this is the header file. If we go down to the source file, you'll see that our physics that we're going to be using for this test experiment is the EM standard physics. Now, the reason I'm using this is just because we're just using a photon. And so EM standard is good enough. But if you want to use other particles, you're going to set some different physics lists in here. But then now that we've registered this physics, if we just call the construct particle and it construct process methods from the G4V modular physics list, everything is set up fine and it works great. All right, so we have our primary generator action. We have our physics list. Now we just need our detector construction. So this is pretty simple. We just use the G4V user detector construction class. 
And the only method that we're required to override is construct. And this is where you put all your detectors that you want displayed in the world. But for this project, we also need to override the construct SD and field method. So SD stands for sensitive detector, and that's what we're using in our project to record those particle energies. So we're gonna to need to also override this method here. So let's go over to the source file. So if you've seen a detector construction before, this will look pretty familiar. But basically we're gonna start by creating the world. So first things first, we wanna set some parameters. We set the world size to 20 centimeters. So we're gonna be creating a G4 box, uh, 20 centimeters tall, wide, and long. Then we're gonna set the material to be a vacuum. So using this G4 galactic material, um, we're gonna make the world a vacuum. And following the detector construction pattern, we do a solid world using some G4 object, G4 box, G4 sphere, whatever kind of shape you want. Then we need to make the logic world out of a logical volume. And that's where we put the material. And then we create a physical world, which is a G4 PV placement. Now at the bottom of this method construct, we need to return a physical volume. And so what we always need to do is make sure we return that physical world. All right, so now that we've constructed the world, we're gonna create our detector. So I created the X, Y of my detector to be 10 centimeters. So it's a square of 10 by 10, but then the Z it's only one nanometer thick. It's really, really thin. I also tested out all these different materials for it but I'll show you guys how this works, but I ended up going with a vacuum for the material. So basically what this detector is, it's literally a piece of vacuum in a vacuum. So it's nothing. It doesn't disturb the particle's trajectory at all. All it does is grab the information from the particle as the particle shoots through it. So just like the world, we need to create a solid detector, logic, and a physical detector. And then we need to make sure our physical detector is placed inside the logic world. So detector is a child of the world. And then again, we're gonna return the world. So now down here at the bottom, we have our construct SD and field method. We'll be seeing this in a second, but to have a sensitive detector, we're gonna need a sensitive detector and a hits collection. So what we can do here is we'll come up with names for them. The sensitive detector name, I just call it SD. And then hits collection, just SD hits collection. Then we're going to create a sensitive detector. And this is using a class that I defined that I'll show you guys in a quick second. But we created a new sensitive detector using the name and the hits collection name. And then this line, we're actually going to use the SD manager singleton. So if you guys aren't familiar with what a singleton is in code, I'd recommend you check out my analysis video about GANT4. But basically what this is, is it's a class that can be accessed by any other class at any time. So how we're gonna register this sensitive detector with the GANT4 engine is we're gonna get this SD manager singleton. We're gonna get the instance using this method, get SDM pointer. And then we're going to add the detector to it. And once we do this, the sensitive detector is registered in the engine so that it'll actually work. And then finally, we need to remember to assign this sensitive detector to one of our volumes up here. Otherwise, it's just out in the void and it's not assigned to anything. So nothing's going to happen. So we have to call this method set sensitive detector. And this is a detector construction method but basically we set it to logic detector. And if we look up here to logic detector, it's actually our logical volume of our little void detector that we created. So this is the method to actually register the sensitive detector, add it onto the correct detector that we want and make sure that it's in the system so that it works. All right, so now that we've laid down all this baseline, we're gonna look at the sensitive detector class and the hits collection class. So let's start here with the sensitive detector class. So to use a sensitive detector, we're going to need to inherit from this G4V sensitive detector base class. Now the methods that we can override in this are initialize, process hits, and end of event. Process hits 
is basically every time a particle hits that sensitive detector, we can use this method to do things with that particle. Then we're also going to have a hits collection in here, and I'll be showing you guys that after this. So let's go to the sensitive detector source file. Now you'll notice that in our constructor, we have a name and hits collection name. So the reason why we do it this way is because in bigger GM4 applications, you might have lots of different sensitive detectors. So in our initialize method at the beginning of the event, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to create our hits collection. Now we're going to get the ID using this SD manager pointer. And this is important for the next step when we're going to register the hits collection to our HCE. So the HCE in this case is our G4 HC of this event. Basically what an HC of this event is, is it's just a list of hits collections. So during a Jamf4 event, basically if you have any hits collections, you want to send them to this HC of this event object. And so that way the engine can take care and organize those. So basically in initialize, we need to make sure we add the hits collection to the HC of this event using our HCID and the hits collection that we created. So this is another kind of just making sure that the GM4 engine knows where our hits collection is and what to do with it. All right, guys, so now we're onto the process hits event. And this happens every time a particle hits the detector. So this is where we kind of have some liberty to do what we want. What I chose to do in this is first made sure that we only take the particle information if it's the first step in the volume. Let's say we have a detector that's pretty thick. If the particle is going through that detector, we don't want to get the energy every single point of its trajectory. We only want the first step. So I took advantage of this step is first step in volume function. If it's not the first step anymore, we're just going to end the method there. One thing to mention about this method process hits is you have to return a bool. From what I understand, this doesn't affect the GM4 engine much. It just depends on what you want to do. All right, so let's say that our particle is the first step in the volume. We skip this line and we go down. So we can get any information that we really want off this particle. What I chose is to get the energy and position but there's a lot of things we can do. Kinetic energy, we can do, let's see what we can do. So you go a step dot get, and we can do delta energy, momentum, position, time, number of secondary particles, and the list goes on and on. So there's a lot of information we can actually get off this particle. But again, like I said, for this simple test, I just want to get the energy and the position. Then this is where we need to create our hit object. So I created a hit based on this hit class that I've created and set the energy and the position to this hit. And the hit class is nice because it keeps all the information about the particle together. So I know that this energy belonged to this particle and this position belonged to that particle. And then we insert the hit into our hits collection. And that's the end of the process hits methods. And we just return true just because we need to return some kind of bool. And then at the end of event, basically all we do here is we loop through the hits collection and we're going to call the print function on every single hit. So I define the print function in our hit class, and that's what prints it out to the console. All right, to end it off here, you guys, let's look at the hits collection classes. So here's the hits collection header file, and I included my hit and hits collection in the same header file just because hits collection was so short. I just put it all in the same file. So first things first, we have our hit class. And this comes from G4V hit. So the methods that we're overriding here are the print method. And these are some methods that we created for ourselves, set energy and set position. Then down here, we have our hits collection. And this is inherited from the G4T hits collection. The G4T hits collection is simply just a list of hits. Again, if you guys want more information about hits collection and hits, I made a whole video about hits and hits collections. You can click on that and check it out but I'll go over quickly right now. So let's go over to the source file, hitscollection.cc. Now, as far as hits goes in the constructor, we just set the energy and position back to zero. Now in the print function, this is the override function. We're just gonna G4C out all the information that we had. So we're gonna do energy and we take advantage of the G4 best unit. So it tells us what unit it is, MEB, KEB, whatever. 
and then we have position x, y, and z. Then we define these methods of set energy and position. And then finally, we just define our hits collection constructor. Um, basically, all it does is it calls the G4T hits collection constructor. Like I said, hits collection, it looks a little messy, but it doesn't do much. All it does is it just holds all our hits in one list. So after seeing that, this sensitive detector code makes a lot more sense, right? We created our hit, we set the energy and position using those setters that we defined, and then we just insert it right into our hits collection. All right, guys, to end off here, let's run a quick simulation. I will do test calorimeter, some argument so we get batch mode. And then let's do run initialize the gun energy 100 MeV. And then let's just run 100 particles just for fun. So run beam on 100. And there you go. It took a fraction of a second. And every single one says 100 MeV. So it shows that our detector really is accurate. It's telling us exactly how much energy each particle has. And so if you have a more complicated GM4 application with particles being generated here and there, and you really want to know how much energy the particles have, you can make use of this test calorimeter. Put it in your GM4 world somewhere, and any particles that hit it will record exactly how much energy are in those. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys, again, want to check this out, I'll leave a link in the description to my source code. And I always appreciate if you guys would consider supporting me by clicking on one of those links in the description below. Good luck on your Janet 4 coding, and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.